Hey guys, so um, today will be a short video on how to uh, hollow out your 3D uh, print. So the program I'm using to do this uh, will be Autodesk Mesh Mixer and uh, it's a free program, just google Autodesk Mesh Mixer you can download it. It's a few years old but uh, it works fine for this type of work. Uh, basically I'll be using it to uh, hollow out the model as well as to add vents and also uh, to check the mesh for any errors so let's import in one of my masks and so I've already exported out the SDL from uh, ZBrush and if you watch the previous videos, uh, I show you how to uh, rescale and clean up the, the model so it's ready for print. And so this will be uh, the second final step uh, to get it ready for printing. Um, so with 3D print, uh, especially on resin printers, uh, you need to hollow out your model. And one, it's also to save resin. Two, it increases uh, print quality and three uh, by hollowing and adding vents uh, you basically uh, have a higher chance of success okay so this is uh, one of the last it's just called B for now and this is what I've just exported out of uh, ZBrush so right now it's not hollow so the first thing we want to do is uh, Mesh Mixer has a really good error checking functionality so you want to go to uh, import in your model and then go to analysis and go to inspector okay so you see that it's marked out areas where uh, there are errors with the mesh and you don't really need to click on each individual one or anything like that generally just uh, select flat fill and it will do a auto and press auto repair all okay and that's that's good to go uh, if you have a mesh with lots and lots of errors then you might want to uh, before exporting out from ZBrush uh, within the ZBrush just double check the mesh do auto groups and delete any sort of floating bits as well as uh, in ZBrush, there's the mesh integrity checker. You might want to run that as well uh, before exporting it out. But uh, generally speaking, Mesh Mixer will do a pretty good job at fixing up your mesh. So the second thing we want to do is create an internal internal shell for the hollow. And if you go to edit and go to uh, hollow, actually the next thing you want to do before we do this step is to check the size so go to edit and then press transform okay and it's going to tell you the size of your model right here in millimeters so just double check that this is going to be the correct size because when you do the hollow uh, you're working with real world scale so um, generally we do a two uh, a 1.8 mil millimeter hollow thickness uh, so if you think about it if you do if you rescale your model after the hollowing then that thickness is going to change okay so just make sure you set your your scale your size before you do the hollow and in this case I'm going to just change the, the y scale to 95 millimeters uh, because that's what I want to be printing out for all the and make sure uniform scaling is ticked so it will scale proportionately and hit accept okay so to hollow it go to edit and go to hollow okay and what this is going to do is going to give you a preview of the internal hollow and what we first thing we want to do is set that offset distance to 1.8 that's what I like to set it to and that's just basically setting the uh, the thickness okay and 
if we look at the mesh, the internal mesh, uh, it's quite low polygon. So what we want to do is just make that a little bit denser so it's not so crunchy. So we can, uh, you can experiment with this, but 160, we can test 160. And after you change any of these settings, just press the update hollow button to update the, uh, the hollow preview. So right now it's still in preview mode. Okay, so that's a little bit better and we'll leave it at that. Now in the hollow mode, you also have the ability, ability to add drain holes. But uh, I don't typically use this uh, drain hole feature within the hollow mode. I like to manually uh, place my drain holes. And so this is a method I'm going to show you. So after you've set it to 1.8 and increase the mesh density if you need to, just hit accept. And that's going to bake in the hollow. So you don't see anything different here because that mesh we created is still inside the mesh. So you need to separate out the two shells. So if you go to edit again and press edit shells, it kind of, it's kind of like an auto groups in ZBrush. And it will just split out the two meshes. So we have the outside mesh and then we have the inside mesh. Here in this list, click on the little eyeball to hide the outside mesh and we want to see the inside of it. Now, you'll see that the, uh, the mesh has got these red lines through it. That means the normals are flipped. So you want to invert the normals first. So go to select and then double click on the model to select the model. And uh, so in the selection mode, if you find that you can't double click and you're getting this kind of uh, lasso, uh, yep. So just press escape and then go back into select. And if you double click directly on the model, it's gonna select the entire mesh. And once you do that, you should uh, be able to set options on your selection. So we want to invert the normals, which is go to edit and then flip normals. Okay, so now uh, this mesh is now a, a, you know, the normals are flipped and now you can work on it. So the reason, like I mentioned, is I want to do this um, process manually is because I now have the option to do some basic sculpting um, with a mesh mixer. And what I'm going to do is just smooth out some of these um, overhangs and peak areas just to make it easier for printing. So you don't need to go too crazy with smoothing things out, but um, yeah, you just uh, just move out areas that um, that are, are highly extruded, basically peaks. Okay, so uh, to do this, just make sure you select the internal shell and then go to sculpt, and then go to brushes, and select the shrink smooth brush. So you want to use the shrink smooth brush because uh, you want to be careful. Because you want you're working on the internal uh, internal shell, so you don't want to be changing too much or reducing the thickness of the shell. Okay, it's okay to add a little bit of thickness, but you don't want to reduce it too much. Uh, so the shrink smooth brush is a good one to use. Select that one, and also uh, make sure volume is selected as well. And you don't need to have symmetry on. I like to use flow and volumetric. So this uh, this is kind of like Sculptures Pro mode within ZBrush, is that it can automatically, uh, dynamically adjust your topology, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is just use this brush just to smooth out some of these peaks. Smooth things out. So this is just going to help with uh, printing because you don't want any sort of air trapped in there to cause extra suction as well as uh, needing to add support on the inside.
is just smoothing things out. And so as I mentioned before, you should be careful about how much smoothing you do. Don't go too overboard uh, because you are essentially changing the thickness of your mesh. Okay. But I like to do this step manually uh, just to make sure that the, the printing success rate is higher because it does help. So you can change the size of your brush with the scroll wheel on your mouse as well. And I'm just moving the edges here. Just so we get a nice transition. So we don't have any irregular uh, sections here. Right, so little peaks like that. It's kind of similar to what we were doing in ZBrush with smoothing out the peaks. Uh, but yeah, this is just obviously the inside of it, so you don't get to see the details, so this is more about helping the print quality uh, on the inside. Okay, so yep, that looks fine. You don't need to go too crazy on smoothing things out, but this looks good. So once you're happy with that, then we basically uh, want to add some vents, okay? so. Remember we are working on the inside of the mesh, so we still got the outside mesh here. Okay, so we're gonna add some vents and we're gonna use Boolean operation within Mesh Mixer uh, to cut, it, cut out the, the vents and also the inside. So the first thing we wanna do is add in some cylinders for the vents. And to do this, go to the Mesh Mix tab up the top and select the cylinder object and you basically just drag and drop it onto the mesh and we want to add the vent on the bottom so uh, the positioning of this is basically you want to get it as close as possible to the first area where the print is going to happen so usually down the bottom and if you think about it we're going to be doing a boolean subtraction right on the main outside mesh so this vent hole is going to be on the bottom okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another vent hole up the top here uh, just so if you think about uh, when we're doing the cleaning, we'll be submerging the print in alcohol and uh, alcohol will be going inside the mesh. Now when you have more than, you, when you have just the one hole, uh, it's hard to get the water out. But uh, if you have two holes, then air can go in and water and alcohol then can come out. It's much easier. So it's usually usually better to have more than one vent in your model and in this case I'm going to add it up to the top so we want to keep the middle section um, flat because this will be for uh, adding the magnet sticking the magnet onto the back here okay Okay, so now we're going to select the two cylinders and then combine it. So using the shift button, you can click and select. And then we want to combine. So now it's one mesh. And now we want to do a Boolean union onto the internal shell. 
So go to Boolean Medium, select both the tubes and the face. Go to Boolean Medium. So this is uh, like a Boolean operation in ZBrush. A couple of things you want to make sure you use is untick auto reduce results and tick use intersection curve. So this one's important as well. It's going to give you a nice clean intersection curve here. Uh, without it, sometimes uh, it can give you, give you a rough result. Now press W on your keyboard to see the topology. Okay, so now that's doing a Boolean union. And then hit accept. Okay, so now we want to subtract Boolean, subtract this internal shell from the outside shell. So make visible your outside shell and then select both the internal and the external and then do a Boolean difference. Now if you're good at getting an inverse boolean uh, difference, just make sure, like what I've done, just make sure you select the outer shell first and then select the inner shell. Oop, don't want a union, sorry. You want a boolean difference. Cancel out of that. So select the outside and then the inside and select boolean difference. Okay, so now you'll see that it's basically cutting out the inside from the outside. And again, we want to make sure that we untick auto reduce results and uh, tick use intersection curve and hit accept okay so now you have a single piece hollowed out model and it's ready for export and when I go to file I will choose export and you want to make sure you export as a STL binary format do not choose STL ESCII that's gonna be like 10 times the size and you're gonna end up with a couple gigs of uh, data for one single model so choose STL binary and then export it I generally put in a H for hollow and then the model name B one hit save and that's now ready to be imported into your slicer for adding support and uh, I'll be using Chudu box for that so uh, this is just the step to do the hollowing of the model step will be basically adding supports and then slicing and printing the model. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.